Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna to be doing a $600 full streaming setup. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. So if you wanna get a Windows 10 license for really cheap, you just type in our code TB20 with the link down below in the description, and then you just click apply code, and then boom, you have Windows 10 for super cheap. We use those Windows 10 keys a lot here with all the PC builds we do on the channel. And actually, GVG Mall was nice enough to give you all 10 free Windows 10 keys that we're gonna be giving away to people in the comment section down below. So if you wanna win a Windows 10 key, please comment down below and we will reach out to you once the uh, contest is over. So how about we get into this PC build, shall we? So as you guys can see, we are missing a couple components from this live setup in this current frame, but we're gonna be doing that over here at our benchmark station where we'll have all of the components. So first things first, I wanna let you all know that this setup is gonna be full of compromises. Again, if you want a live streaming setup that's gonna be great, check out our $1,000 live streaming setup. But we were challenged by you guys to try to put something together for around the $500 to $600 range, and well, we came up with this. We're gonna be using this Dell Optiplex 7010, which comes with a third gen i7, eight gigs of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and it's actually a slim tower. What we're gonna be trying to do is transplanting this into this case right here. Will it work? Well, if it doesn't, you probably won't see this video right away, but it's most likely gonna work. We'll make it work. Uh, but the main idea here is to get a i7, which is a quad core with hyper threading, and then upgrade it with a 1060 from EVGA that we got also used on eBay for around $100. The 1060 is a really good choice because you get the ability to choose between using the CPU to encode for live stream and also the NVENC encoder on the NVIDIA card, which is honestly a good alternative. It can make the streams run a little bit better and allow you to be able to play your games at higher frame rates. So as Matt said, it comes with a 500 gig hard drive and eight gigs of RAM, but we're also going to spice it up by adding an ADA to 240 gig SSD, which happened to be around like 20 bucks now on eBay. Also check that in the link down below. So this power display here is honestly about the same price that you can get like an EVGA like 450 BT for, but this is a Roswell Arc 450, which is 80 plus bronze certified. And we figured we'd give it a shot because Roswell does make some pretty good stuff and we have a Roswell case here, but we kind of just wanted to order everything on eBay just to make it a lot easier, but we'll probably have eBay and Amazon links down below, but 450 watt power supply, that'll be plenty for this build. And of course, if you're gonna make a gaming PC in 2019, it's gotta have some RGB. This is just your basic RGB strip that's straight out of China. You know, you can get these for like really dirty. cheap. It takes two months to get there. It does take two months to get there from eBay, but yeah. these will work perfectly fine to make this case look really nice. Uh, it does have a small acrylic window that can actually have light shine through it, so that'll look pretty nice. Another really interesting thing we have to try out is a headset combo where it actually has a mic on it. This is from HyperX, it's called the Cloud Stinger. We don't really know anything about it, but it's $30, it looks really nice, and it's from a pretty trusted brand, so we figured we'd give it a try, but it is recertified slash refurbished on eBay. We'll have a link in the description down below. All right, so over here at our benchmark station, we have the rest of what makes this streaming setup possible. First, I wanna talk about this keyboard and mouse combo kit from Roswell. This is the Fusion C31 with a basic membrane keyboard, but it does have RGB backlighting and an RGB mouse, so it's gonna look pretty nice. Again, we're making some compromises here so we can put the most possible performance into the PC first. Now, as far as monitors go, these might look familiar because these are the exact monitors that we used in the $1,000 setup, but what we do recommend is you check out the link in the description down below and purchase these monitors from On, which is a Walmart brand, but they're actually really affordable 1080p 60 hertz monitors that will work great. If you're if you're live streaming, you really need a dual monitor setup. Now for the webcam, we actually went with a cheaper webcam compared to the C920. If you can spend a little bit more, we highly suggest going with the C920, but this is the Microsoft Life Cam, which you can get on eBay for around 20 bucks, sometimes cheaper than that. It's kind of an older webcam, but it is 1080p and it still produces a pretty good quality, which you will see when we do the live streaming test. And lastly, if you're wondering what we're using for the microphone, we actually are gonna be using the mic on this headset. So when we do the live streaming test, you'll be able to tell what this microphone sounds like, what the video quality looks like, and just how the live streaming PC works. So how about we go ahead and start putting this PC together and then we'll form this awesome live streaming setup. Lastly, what we're gonna be including is an app that is free for you to download called Touch Portal, which is basically a Stream Deck alternative, which we featured in the last video as well. And it allows you to change scenes in OBS directly from your phone without having to buy the $100 Stream Deck. So we will be showcasing that again in this video.
So we had a little bit of an issue guys. So what we are going to do is you can see fan underscore CP right here. This is not a standard fan connector. So what we're going to do is this was the old CPU fan cooler and it used one of these, which plugs right into this, but we need one of basically like this style fan, which is what we have here. I'm showing you guys so many things, but this is gonna go here and we basically need this connector right here to be on this. And thanks to our friends over at Roswell for sending over this really nice kit that came with this soldering iron as well. It was a huge toolkit, so I'm glad we have it because otherwise we'd probably not be able to do this right now. And you can find simple layouts online for things like this. If you're very interested in doing something like this at home, there are easy pin layouts you can find for the stock cooler, and then also find the layout for that cooler for the Dell Optiplex. Then all you gotta do is match the wires, and pretty much you're good to go. Keep in mind this does require a little bit of modding, as we mentioned, so keep that in mind when you uh, venture into this thing. So yeah, back to the time lapse. gaming test. I just wanted Matt to sit in. Oh dude, I hear him on the ground. Oh, I got a kill! What is this? What is that? Break, 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 break! What the hell is that? Lightning strikes? <laughs> Alright. That's cool, I guess. Hey, I gotta kill that, so that's what's important. We're going P90. P90 and a win. What the heck happened to the map? <laughs> I guess it's original dust? I never even seen the OG dust, dude. It looks disgusting. Fortnite! Oh. Did I even hit him? We already tried Fortnite! Oh. What did I just- I got hopped. How, how did he hit that? <laughs> did the bullet fly up? Yeah, they were so bad. Like, they, it was basically like playing bots. Hashtag bot. Oh god. Ah, oh, dude, I needed one more shot on him. I smell people. The battle rifle's just like Halo uh, 3. Straight OP. Oh, alright. I'll call it there, dude. Dude, I don't like how this guy is assaulting me. Get him away. Bro, I can, I can hear his footsteps. Bro, I know he's behind me. Do you think my turnaround will be there? <sighs> oh, God, he got me. Oh, oh, dude, you like, you like that? Get the good, get the good, get the good, get the good. 
I don't, what, what damaged me first? Because that dude was like real, unless that's a one shot gun. Alright, well. So, as you guys can see, the streaming setup does work, in fact, but it is not exactly ideal because there's a lot of compromises made, such as all the soldering we had to do, all the cutting, and all of the like, case modifications, even because. This motherboard is just not standard and also all of the connectors are not standard. We recommend trying to find like a full size tower because that might have the proper connectors in it, although it also might not. We didn't really research that, but long story short, we recommend that you look it up, make sure the motherboard's standard ATX or just standard micro ATX. Make sure that all the connectors are normal, especially the power connectors and also fan headers because we actually had to run a Molex fan connector to be able to connect the two three pin fans in the system. So again, guys, this was kind of a challenge for us to put together, and in no way do we recommend going specifically with stuff like this, but as always, in a challenge and the stuff that we do here, you can always mod it to make it work. So if you're somebody who has some experience, go for it. You can try to do some of the modding with it and just know that you might have to do some soldering and some other stuff to make this thing work. But overall, for a budget streaming PC and gaming PC, it did a pretty good job. So thanks again, don't forget to use the link in the description down below with code TB20 with GBGMall if you want to get some really dank Windows 10 keys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You did it.